Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it seems like we're turning into a tech news uh, channel. Not intentionally. Week. Not intentionally, but this is, uh, this is a pretty big story. So we've been following the potential ban of TikTok, and now the US government is telling the TikTok owners ByteDance that they have to sell it or they might get banned. To me, okay, I don't, there's a lot of issues with TikTok, I agree. Um, TikTok has a lot of things on it that are problematic and that, that you know, are concerning. But I, that this whole sell it or get banned is bullshit because basically you're trying to strong arm them into selling it to people they approve of, which I, I already have questions. I think, what was it, Spooking said, you know, TikTok is doing data mining. Oh, that's bad. Unless we make sure we're friends with those who own it, you yeah. know? And I was like, yeah, that's not cool. Yeah, because th there was talk they might sell it to like Microsoft or something. I'm like, oh, what could possibly go wrong? You've already got Microsoft, which is incredibly invasive. So I'm of two minds at this yeah. one. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm like, well, I agree. There's some issues here. I'm also like, but you're, you're going to tell them that you're going to get banned if they don't sell to who they want you to sell to. That's very, uh, like, that's, that's, very control. That's just con that's concerning. That's very concerning. It's very concerning. So we'll we'll talk about that. Then we're going to talk about uh, the former head of the uh, creator fund or whatever. The guy who's in charge of the creator fund for TikTok, right? So TikTokers don't make a lot of money. People don't realize this. TikTokers really don't make a lot of yeah, money. Yeah, they don't. Most of them. The ones that are making bank are the ones that are getting big fat brand deals. Mm -hmm. They weren't making the money on the views because TikTok is not monetized nearly as well as something like YouTube. Well, Instagram's like the same thing. It's the same it's thing. A, you get you get money from like sponsorships and things like that. Yeah, and they had a creator fund too, which is basically venture capital that they'd set aside. This guy actually came out and said that despite the PR spin, the creator fund was never about the creators. It was all about keeping creators on TikTok and not letting them go to Instagram or YouTube. Well, it's funny. He's not even at TikTok anymore. No. So he's just letting it, he's just letting it fly. He's just letting it fly. He's like, oh, here's the truth. The truth is we didn't care about creators. We it weren't was, giving it to help you. It was to help us, to keep you there, to keep eyeballs there. To right. get your data. If we had to throw you a few dance. bucks to get, keep you going, then we'll do it. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. And they keep a lion's share of the ad money. They, they do. So we're going to talk about this. Uh, we're going to talk about the Guardian's got this article up. Oh, God, the Guardian. They're really begging for. Lend us a hand in 2023. Give us this. Give us. Give just once from a dollar or better. <laughs> you too can. Support a starving journal. Starving, a starving journal. Oh, my God. Uh, so they said that TikTok is making Gen Z go broke because they're promoting products that Gen Z can't afford and they're going well, broke trying to... I've heard this stuff. several times in different places that, that, that these influencer culture, the problem is that they're, they're tending to you know focus on younger people, some millennials, Gen Z, to get them to buy shit. And the people are buying the stuff and they're not like paying for their bills or different things like that because they're trying to be like like a TikToker. Yeah, it's like, let's go buy expensive, you know, uh, clothes or expensive makeup or whatever. And meanwhile, I, I can't pay my rent, you know, and that's that's kind of the downside of influencer culture because a lot of it's fake. A lot of the stuff that they get that they're promoting, they're actually given. It's like they're not going out and buying, you know, $200 makeup on their own. Well, I know, I know for a fact though, I'm seeing people that kids I know and, and stuff and it, it, they'll go buy something because they saw it on TikTok. Yeah. They yeah. were doing recipes because I saw it on TikTok, you yep. know? Oh, yeah. TikTok's pretty powerful. And that's 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 the problem. They're that using is... it for other things, which, yeah. So let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over uh, 290, almost 300,000 subs on YouTube. On TikTok, we got like 30,000 for gaming. Well, we should just promote that on TikTok and just start saying we want to stay on TikTok because, you know. We don't have to get paid for it, but we can we can influence people. We can influence people on with TikTok. That, you know, with our, cl our horrible clownfish views and warp the minds of everyone. We can warp the minds of Gen Z. Because, you know, we get blamed for everything anyway. Might as well. <laughs> just be like, just start dunking on TikTok on TikTok. I'll just start doing TikTok ads for all our merch, because apparently that's what you do. Y'all yeah. need this, right, kids? Yeah, you <laughs> so. need it. You need our, our old man comics. No. Uh, <laughs> written by a woman. Uh, 
<laughs> Axios, U.S. tells TikTok owners to sell the app or face a ban. The Biden administration has warned TikTok it faces a ban in the U.S. if its Chinese parent company, ByteDance, does not sell its stake in the U.S. version of the app, a source confirmed. Now, they're saying that it's not going to matter anyway. If they sell it, that it still works the same way or whatever. Well, that's what I'm saying. Wouldn't the code and the source and all that, they'd be the same thing. As yeah. I said, that's why Squid King joked, data mining's bad unless we're the ones that own the data mining. So I love how Axios just kind of breaks it down because I'm, I'm good because I, I was going to pull up the – I had the NPR article pulled up. And I'm like, yeah, this is way too wordy because I think they get paid by the word over there. Why it matters. TikTok has become one of the most popular mobile apps in the country, amassing over 100 million U.S. users. Banning it would have an immediate impact on millions of everyday Americans. I think we'd get a lot more done. And would mark a significant escalation of tension between China and the U.S. Now, I saw something on the news this morning that they're going to have like academic stuff on TikTok now for the, all the kids. Like, hey, kids, don't watch influencers trying to peddle you shit or some crazy people going on about their mental illness and self-diagnosing. No, no, no. Oh my God. You can learn about math and self-diagnosing. I mean, the self-diagnosing thing, you're not wrong on. I can't tell you how many videos I've seen that these kids are like, I am now, I now have whatever, insert whatever, because somebody on TikTok says, because they, they say they have it. I'm neurodivergent. Did did you see someone for that? Did they diagnose you? Well, no, but I saw a TikTok video, so I know I am. And also, I've got nine genders because TikTok said so. Well, I mean, I don't hate the idea of using it for, you know, things like math and stuff for kids. Because, you know, quite frankly, a lot of kids don't understand what they're being taught in school anyway. But which math? Like actual math or... That's a good point. Or the math that doesn't hurt your feelings. Or the math that, yeah. like, the you know, the testing, test-taking math, you know, common core uh, math, which is absolute awful. Okay, so this is a, this is a, this is a side tangent. Now we're talking about the re-education of America's youths. So our son is taking college classes for business. Oh, my God. This business. one. Oh, my God. I can't even. For business, right? Business is pretty much black and white, cut and dry, right? I thought, no, that's old man business. That's how business used to be. That's how business in school was taught when I was a youngin. No, no, no. His uh, One of his questions, he actually pulled me over to the computer and he said, hey, Dad, you got to look at this because I got this 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 uh, answer wrong on the quiz. Okay. It was like the purpose of a firm, a company is to make money. True or false? Well, he picked true. He picked true because old man math, old man business sense is like, yes, the purpose of the firm, the company is to make money. No, the answer was false. It was false. The answer was uh, that the company is supposed to do good it's socialism and money is a, money is a, money is a, a side way. effect of doing good. That was the correct answer according to this college quiz, which I think it was McGraw Hill. Well, this is this is the same textbook that he was telling about. The woman who wrote the textbook was some, I think, some like social media person, influencer person, and she's like, TikTok well, how business. you determine what kind of business you should do? And they're like, oh well, first God. you got to find out what sign you are, or take a personality quiz, something, something like ridiculous oh, then, like that. Then you go to Kickstarter. And then you go to Kickstarter. Yes, yes. you go, go, go crowdfund your business with no, no nobody, you know, to no, no platform. You go crowdfund your business. Says the person who had a platform to crowdfund this book uh, or whatever. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I got more out of a high school economics class than, than these college level business <laughs> classes. Whatever they say in the book, do the opposite. Do you'll, the opposite. You'll, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Don't listen to social media. You'll be fine. Anyway, uh, details. Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S., a regulatory arm that reviews foreign investment in the U.S., told TikTok that the government planned to ban the app in the U.S. if its owners didn't sell, according to a TikTok source familiar with the situation. Remember when it was Trump? And, oh, yeah. And he uh, was pushing for TikTok to be banned and or sold, and everybody came out against it. Racism. and Racism. It was racist. It was. It was like because all these marginalized people needed their TikTok and all that. Yeah. Um, but now Biden's doing it and it's OK. Well, they banned it from government phones. Like, you know, they, it was some been, college campuses are banning it. Are know? they? No, yeah. so, I know government like government phones are allowed to have yeah. TikTok on it because it's too dangerous um, as far I mean, but they know what they're using it for. Um I don't know. I'll continue. Their outreach included a broad outline of what a proposal for TikTok to remain in the U.S. would look like to satisfy the government's national security concerns. Make sure one of our friends buy it so we can we have control of it. Yeah, pretty much. Is it clear to TikTok what the U.S. government means by having its owners divest their stake given that a large percentage of ByteDance shares are owned by global investment firms? 
TikTok source noted, adding the CFIUS did not provide details or written order. Uh, yeah, that's always the thing, too. The government's always like, you got to do this, you got to do that. We're not going to tell you how to do it. We don't even know what we want you to do, but we just need to do it because we got to look like we're doing something. I just have a problem with them. I mean, I, I get why they're they're saying what they're saying, but I think the whole, we're going to shut you, then just shut it down. Not we're going to shut it down, uh, but unless you sell it to people we approve of, it's very concerning. Then just then just ban it. Sell it to Elon Musk and see what happens. Well, they won't. No, no, it's got to be people they can control, so that they actually have the control of the information, the control of TikTok. The government's going to seize TikTok, and so now instead of obeying the Chinese government, you're going to obey the U.S. government. You know, honestly, I, th- I would argue it would get worse. Oh, yeah, especially probably. things that are being pushed on TikTok. If 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 the current government got hold of TikTok, got control of TikTok, it would be far, far, far worse. It would be <laughs> like that that quiz, but everywhere it'd be like, yeah, you know, business is bad because it makes people feel bad, and you should just you know work for the 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 government owned business guys because you know money is just a side effect of doing good in the world and only the government knows how to do good. Uh, what they're saying, TikTok argues divestiture wouldn't address the government's national safety concerns. Of course not. They're not down with it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I got to tell you the truth. I am torn on this one because I'm like, I do believe TikTok is basically spyware. I yeah. think it is. But, but I don't like the idea of the government just coming in and being like, that's exactly where I'm yeah, at. You guys sell your business or we're going to take own, control to of your business. We, 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 we approve yeah. of. And I'm like, no, no, no. See, that's just too many red flags for me. Because they're like, yeah, okay, so it's a tool of the Communist Party in China. Let's take your business away from you. and Yes, I know, right? It's the same thing. We're going to take control of it. Then where does this end? Like if this if it happens with TikTok, what other companies can they say, oh, we don't like, but we, you have to Twitter. sell it to somebody we control? It's not fair that one man owns Twitter. The government has to have more oversight over that. So we mm-hmm. got to step in. And we have immunities for our political, you know, I mean, uh, no, I didn't, did I say that out loud? Yeah, right. TikTok's critics say the Chinese laws require Chinese-owned companies to share data with the government and argue that as long as the company is controlled by Chinese owners, the U.S. can't be certain American users' data. Then just ban the app. But I'm going I'm to be honest here. If I'm being completely honest, how many apps do you think are out there that, that are mining money or data and stuff? I mind money too. Mining data and stuff like that and, give, and, and the government's using it. I guarantee you a whole shit ton. It's the same coin, different side. Yeah, some of it's Bitcoin. Yeah, don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. It's it's um, pretty much every app mines data, and you don't know. I mean, that's the thing too. Like, they could even be you know plausible deniability. Like, oh yeah, we separated from the CCP, and we're not giving them our data. Oh my God, we had a data breach. What happened? What happened? We don't know what happened. Somebody just came in, took all the user both passwords, all the credit card information. I don't know what happened. It just yeah, that's it. There you go, guys. That's it. Somebody stole it. Yeah. It was the hacker known as Anonymous. <laughs> 4chan took it. 4chan took all the data from TikTok. Uh, so here's the thing. Everybody's putting their eggs in the TikTok basket. We haven't done much with it. Like I said, we've got some gaming. We were waiting for it to be banned. But yeah, yeah. I'm kind of like, I'm sitting here like, why, why even bother if the thing's going to get banned? But there are people that swear by TikTok. They're TikTokers. We went to freaking... Denny's the other day, and they had a menu with friggin' TikTokers. Oh my god, they did TikTokers on. They're the called them influencers. Influencers are like so and so's special milkshake, and use your imagination. And so and so likes eggs this way, and I'm like, who the hell are these people, and who the hell are gonna care who these people are? And a lot of these. Uh, well, the target audience, which is Gen Z and some millennials, are gonna care, and then, and they're using that to to basically keep these people bankrupt because they know they're easily controlled. Yeah, keep you poor. Good keep job. Good job, school system. You gave them exactly what they wanted. Well, well. speaking of keeping you poor, so I remember when this was announced that they were doing the creator fund, like, finally, everybody's going to have a chance to be a, be TikTok rich. And Mr. Beast actually came out and said, do you know how much money I make on TikTok? And I get, like, billions of views. He's like, mm-hmm. I made, like, $15,000 last year mm-hmm. on billions of views. And I looked it up. It's not much. Um, with the creator fund, you can earn between... Two and four cents oh, that's awful. for every 1,000 views. So there's CPMs, two to four cents. Yes. This means you might expect 20 to $40 after a million views. That's, that's great money. You can quit your job at Starbucks. Because TikTok's reliant on um, them keeping the money, why pe- the people that are the target demographic, the target, the people that they, they want to use the, the program are after clout. 
It's like the, the, the monopoly for millennials where, you, you know, you upvotes instead of money. Yeah. It's like that. These people are so obsessed with being famous and internet famous that, you know, they don't care if the money's there sometimes. Yeah. And that's the thing. And they think that it's going to, and in some cases it does. In some cases it does lead to financial success, but it's, you know, the difference with TikTok and YouTube is YouTube actually does, you know, a revenue share with video advertisers, which is a lot more equitable. But Facebook was doing the same thing. Like, you know, we were posting videos on Facebook. And I'm like, I don't even understand how their videos monetize. And basically just Facebook decides if they want to give you some money or not out of this pool. And I'm like, that seems really dodgy. And this is the same thing that happened with Webtoon when Webtoon came in. And they wanted to get web comics creators on their platform. They're like, oh, we have a creator fund. We'll just kind of give you some money based on views, what we think you should get. And they're putting, they're slathering your, your comic up with ads and stuff. And you have no idea how much money they're actually getting, but they're just going to give you some of the money if they feel like it. Yeah, they they're talking about accounting to you. No, they're not giving you an accounting. Anyway, th this guy, uh, Sean Kim, who worked for TikTok, came out and said, yeah, this was never about the creators. This is all about just maintaining creators and appeasing them. Like, we'll give you something. Keeping them here so we can keep making money off of them. Yeah. TikTok's former head of product says Creator Fund wasn't launched to help creators monetize. Uh, he's, he claimed the social media giant launched his $2 billion fund as a reactive measure against competition. Because, again, Facebook had reels. Uh, YouTube started shorts. And uh, they're like, oh, my God, we can't have people go where they might get paid more. Um, so this is the former head of product for TikTok's U.S. operations. So, the, so now it's all coming out. Now that it might get shut down and this guy's not with the company anymore. It's all just coming out. He said the company's $2 billion creator fund was not launched with the altruistic goal of helping creators monetize the platform. Instead, according to the executive, TikTok created the fund as a reactive measure against competition like YouTube and Snap. Oh, I forgot about Snap. They kind of went bye-bye, as a way to keep creators engaged on the platform. Platforms don't really care if you are successful at monetization. They care if they're successful at monetization. Yes. Um, he now leads creator business platform Kajaba, Kajaba as president and chief product officer. The reason why we did this, or the reason why is their metrics and North Star metrics are 100% focused on retention. Daily active users, publisher rates, active days, monetization of creators is not even on there. It's like way, way, way down there. It's an afterthought. Basically, you are build. You guys are doing all the work to build them up to give them money. Yes, because then advertisers come to them and they pay them, uh, you know, to, to advertise on the platform. But if everybody just bails, I mean, honestly, YouTube even, I'll be completely honest. If YouTube could get away with keeping its numbers up there without paying people to post content every day, they'd do it in a heartbeat. They'd be like, yeah, hey, people are still going to advertise. They're still going to pay us. Mm -hmm. We don't give a shit about you guys. And so people are like, oh, my God, we can't believe how poorly YouTube are you know, treating their creators. And they don't care if one channel gets demonetized. And they don't care. No, they don't. They really don't because there are so many other channels out there and so many other people that are willing to throw content up on YouTube. Now, they will chase the people that bring a lot of views because those people bring more ad revenue into YouTube. But yeah, it's not about you. It's never been about you. They make you think it's about you. When we launched the TikTok Creator Fund, we didn't launch to help creators monetize. That's what we said everywhere publicly. I remember that. They had a big mm -hmm. campaign for it and everything. We're doing this to help creators monetize. That's not why we launched it. We launched it as a reactive measure against other platforms, uh, launching their own creator funds. Because I remember it was after, uh, I think Facebook said they were going to do Reels, a Reels fund, and Snap was going to do a fund. We thought to ourselves, what happens if these creators go monetize or create content on these other platforms? That hurts our metrics, our daily active users, our retention. That was the reason why the creator fund was launched. So yeah, if they didn't think anybody was going to leave TikTok, they wouldn't have even bothered paying you. They would have been like, you're going to post shit here anyway. Well, I love this part down here, which is, this is what, what the thoughts I had back when they announced it. He said, he talked about the lack of transparency for such creator funds. If you see a $2 billion creator fund, who's actually checking if we paid $2 billion? Nobody would check. Could check. When asked by the creator and fellow panelists, you know, whatever, if TikTok paid out the $2 billion, he said no. Because no, and I wonder that. I'm like, what, where, what proof do you have that you're actually giving out the full $2 billion? I wondered that myself when I saw this. He's like, nobody can check. Yeah, and when you're seeing what... TikTok creators are actually getting paid and you've got a guy like Mr. Beast who's used to making millions of dollars on YouTube saying, hey, I got a billion views on TikTok and I got 15,000 bucks and that's it. You know, you know, it's bad, mm. you know, so there's a whole lot of what the hell going on. And honestly, even if they would sell TikTok, 
it might wind up going down like Twitter where whoever buys it is like, oh my God, I did not realize how far down the rabbit hole this went. And here's people getting screwed out and stuff here. And here's a bunch of fake oh users God, over we, here. We could have told Musk all this. Yeah, I know, we right? We did. We had many videos. You're like, I think it's worse than you guys think. It's worse than you think. Like half your users are fake. And I think it's going to be the same with TikTok because it's all about fucking over the advertisers, basically. That's that's well, what it's and all about. And the content creators. And the content But creators. what they're doing, and that was the point of this whole thing in a roundabout way, was basically that TikTok, these creator, the content creators, they're, they're getting sponsorship money because they're not getting paid from the platform. So they're out there shilling this shit, mm -hmm. and they're getting paid to show this stuff and brand deals and all that to try to get people who might not be able to afford this stuff to buy this stuff so they feel like in some way they're on the same level. I know they did studies um, recently. I don't have them pulled up. I know they've had... This Several, I've seen this several places. Well, they've asked kids what they wanted to be when they grew up or what their career goal was. And for a majority of them, it's YouTuber, TikToker, social media influencer. And, and because they get, they get all the cool stuff, you know, but that you don't just walk into that. There's a lot of work involved. And they aren't seeing that. They're just seeing, I want to get, I want to be handed stuff and get all the expensive stuff too. Yeah, it, it's really weird. And I remember that, um, and this happened about the same time as the apocalypse on. On YouTube, there are all these hit pieces being written about YouTube and the ad rates and basically trying to talk people out of being YouTubers because they're like, well, so-and-so has been doing YouTube for a long time and they made $1,000 last year and that's it. And this is the reality. YouTube is a shitty career you know, path. And I'm like, kind of like you're picking the people that aren't successful. You know, there, there are people out there again, you know, Mr. Beast, he's far and away the biggest, but I mean, there are lots of other people that are actually making decent money on YouTube, but you deliberately are picking people who are tryhards who are not making money to be like, Oh yeah, see YouTube sucks. You shouldn't even go well, to YouTube. But then the flip side is, you know, then that's less competition for us. So. Well, that's, <laughs> no, it's true. But I'm, I'm saying there's like, there's like a, YouTube, a middle class YouTuber too, that, that, you know, they're not making like ridiculous money, but. Yeah. Um, this part, and I, and I you know, I'm, I don't want to throw my kids in their bus, but I know for a fact Pinky Boo buy, has bought stuff because TikTok oh, yeah, told yeah, her to. Yeah. Um, it's also clear that young people's spending is influenced by what they see on social media. It's a big problem, especially parents out there. I'm sure you, you understand this. You see it every day. They say them so themselves. Videos featuring the hashtag TikTok made me buy it have more than 40 billion views. TikTok's own research found that 52% of millennial users in the UK bought a product because they saw it on the site in the last year, rising to 60% of Gen Z users. It's a whole mentality. Um, and a 2021 Adweek survey in the US found TikTok users were potentially the most dedicated group of buyers from social media. Damn, we need to get our, our books on TikTok. Well, actually, Pinky Boo keeps trying to tell us we she need to did. get our books on TikTok. You put your comments on TikTok, I'm telling you. Oh, she flat out was like, oh, TikTok will buy anything. Yeah, but she's like, you need to get your stuff on there. And now I'm thinking she's probably right. She probably is right. But I've um, thought that before, actually. If it's around, I mean, who the hell knows? I mean, look, it's obviously a lot of people use it. I think the company is too val valuable to just you know, snap it away, no pun intended. There's too many people that would be harmed by it being gone. Yeah. That that's their livelihood and some other things. I don't think they're just going to shut it down. But I think that their ultimatum stupid too. I don't even know what, what a, I mean, ultimately just shutting it down probably would be the best thing to go with, given what they think they're, it's being used for. But um, they're not going to be able to because it's, it's, it's too ingrained into called the culture now. So they're, they said that they've got, uh, a bunch of young people now doing cash stuffing. Young people put physical money into envelopes to avoid mindless digital oh, this shopping. This is what I fucking talked about. Another, oh my fucking. In the other video, I talked about this. This is what they used to do back in the day. This is what they would do. I told you. I just talked about this in another video recently. They used to take their money and they'd have envelopes assigned to, they actually sell envelopes. I think you could probably see them on TikTok. Um, assigned to different bills or different things. And then you put money in that and then you would use that money to pay those, those things so you're not, you know, you're, you know where your money is. You can see the money physically so you know that I'm taking care of it and I'm doing this and that with it. And that way, you know, you weren't tempted to spend more than you had. It's not a new thing. It's like some of these trends are on here, like if butter on crackers, I'm like, Bitch, that's what we ate when we were sick at home from school. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Man, we should make all kinds of money. We'll call it well, granny course huge. I know how to do all that shit. I'm like, miss opportunity here, man. Well, I was just talking about my grandfather and how since, you know, he grew up. Now he was older. We were the same video where that was, that was on. Yeah, he, he was older than oh my, my, my grandmother. He was married before my grandmother. and But he grew up during the Depression and he was actually, you know, stuffing cash all over the house. Like when he died... 
when my grandmother moved out of the house, we had to go around the house and find all the money. It was a freaking treasure hunt. Like, where did Pat put all the money? We don't know. It's in the mattress. It's in the walls. It's in the basement. But it's not just about money, too. Like, these TikTok trends are causing people to go out and do really stupid things. They, you know, like at Disney, we're constantly seeing some stupid idiot on TikTok damaging something, you know, doing something they should they get them hurt to get attention. I mean, that's a like common sense thing. Can we just, like, make common sense trend on TikTok? That the hashtag common sense. Okay, clownfish sense. Clown sense. There we go. We should make our own thing about here's some money saving things and some things you can do that actually make sense instead of being a dumbass and buying everything TikTok tells you to. That's my clown sense is tingling again. Let's watch, let's watch these idiots on TikTok say uh, stupid things. Kids are so dumb. Let's just show them how to be to have common sense. Um, this is interesting. So back to back to Squid King's college level business class okay. with its stupid answer. Teenagers and 20-somethings have always been susceptible to peer pressure, fear of missing out, and overconsumption. Bobo. Yep. As they find a way, as they find their way in the world. But this problem is being completely compounded by patchy financial education in schools. That is true. They don't teach kids like they should. When you've got a college level business class telling you that making money is not the primary goal of the for-profit company. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? <laughs> and I'm like, what am I paying for? What am I paying for? Because we're paying for his school. And I'm like, I, I, every day he tells us something dumb. This guy tried to argue that AI wasn't impacting art or anything that at all. That's, that's bull crap. It's just like when they did spreadsheets or business. It didn't put people out of work. It just, you know. And then the, and there's constantly article after article about AI is causing people to get laid off or get fired, you know, from different yeah, positions. And Academia is living in a whole other world I at this can't. point. But I, yes. They're saying young people are already weathering acute financial and psychological pressures caused by the cost of living crisis. Um, I, there's a lot of kids who aren't prepared, and I mean younger people, who aren't prepared for the way, hell, a lot of adults who aren't prepared um, for the way the world is going. But they don't do them any, they don't help them in schools as much as they should. Um, and it is TikTok and that, that the, the, these brands are just throwing money at these influencers because they want people to buy, buy, buy. And, um, I can't blame the influencers either because, you know, th that's their job. Yeah. Just the, disclaim it. And the thing is, is that, you know, from a company's perspective, and I, I brought this up in the, the BuzzFeed. I did a video on BuzzFeed and advertising revenue. It's cheaper for a company to throw a couple thousand dollars at an influencer than it is to go do a major ad spend on a website. And they might get more bang for the buck. So they're taking the money they would have spent on the website banner ads and they're throwing it at one individual that might get them a lot more sales than, right. you know. And the thing is too, you know, not all TikTok's bad. Not all of YouTube's bad. Not all these things. There are a lot of videos out there that teach kids how to do things and people to do things that they might not know how to do. They have different YouTubers and TikTokers who are out there showing like, you know, everybody's mom, everybody's dad showing you how to do basic life skills. They have Granny Core showing you how to make your own stuff. They have, you know, all kinds of, of actually informational, helpful TikTok and things out there too. Unfortunately, you know, that's not the one, those aren't the ones you hear about, yeah. but there are ones out there that just read books to kids and things like that, that I think are very important because that might be the only interaction these children get, sadly. And I think it's a mixed bag and I wish we could just keep the good and get rid of some of the bad, but there's just, you know, at this point it's gonna be an all or nothing, I think the way it's going. Yeah, pretty much. So I love how they close the article out. You know, they need to be on TikTok, I think, The Guardian, because they're, they're they, they literally spend one, two, three, four paragraphs asking for money. And this is a site that has way too many ads on it. That's almost the whole life of the article. Yeah, I know, right? Like, look at this, this whole big section right here. Please give us money, please. Please, with the love of God. We're gonna wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.